cracking loop. Cracking loops refers to the loop where cracking occurs in the pre-stressed member. The cracking loop sets the limits of the validity of the equations for the elastic stress developed in the concrete. These elastic stress in the concrete are calculated based on the homogeneous cross-sections of the beam. Upon occurrence of the cracking loads, the effective cross-sections of the pre-stressed member is theoretically affected. This will change the behavior of the pre-stressed concrete members when subjected to the load. These are the reasons for predicting the cracking loads. First, we know that cracking will reduce the flexural rigidity. That means the stiffness of the member will be slightly affected. As a result, the development of the deflection increases. Also, the cracking exposes the reinforcement bar and tendons to the moisture and environment. You know that the pre-stressing steels are vulnerable to the corrosions. Cracking also reduces the fatigue resistance of the member. The fatigue resistance refers to the condition that the member is subjected to load and unload continuously for millions of times. Also, the cracks are also visually objectable in some cases and it may lead to leakage of the liquid. For that, Cracking is not preferable for the structures retaining the liquid. For pre-stressed concrete structure, sometimes cracking is allowed, especially when partial pre-stressing is being used. However, it is important to limit the crack width so that the negative effect of the cracking can be controlled. These are the criteria for limiting the crack width. First is the decompressions. It means that all parts of the tendon should lie within the at least 25 mm within the concrete in the compressions. Assuming this is the beam section, when subjected to the load, the bottom part of the beam is undergoing tension while the top part of the beam is undergoing compression. When pre-stressing tendon is applied, depending on the tendon profile and also magnitude of the pre-stressing load, the regions of compression and tension may alter. Let's say now, assuming that we know this is the compression region and this is the tension region. Within the compression regions, draw a offset line of 25 mm from the top of the compression regions and another 25 mm from the bottom of the compression region. With that, the regions between the two lines here are known as the decompression region. Should you intend to lay the tendon in the pre-stressed member and you want to control the crack width, you need to make sure that the tendons fall within the regions of the compression regions. Under some circumstances, the compression zone within the member could be larger. With that, you have a larger region of the decompression region for the layout of the pre-stressing tendon. Another method of limiting the crack width is to limit the crack width to a specified value, which in accordance to the Eurocode 2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. For the applications of the pre-stressing member, depending on the exposure class, the criteria for limiting the crack width are 0 0.2 mm for class X0 
xc1, xc2 to xc4. As for the other exposure class, you have to make sure your tendons fall within the decompression region. For the descriptions of the exposure class, you may refer to table 4.1 in Eurocode 2 part 1. You need to check for cracking only for the frequent loop combinations. For the definitions of frequent loop combinations, you may refer to chapter 1. At the transfer stage, if the tensile stress in the concrete is less than FCTM, the concrete is assumed to be without cracking. This explains the reason that at the transfer stage, the stress limit in tensions is limited by FCTM.